Hey, it's Coach Josh, and we are live in the quarantine zone, and welcome to our Thursday strength training day. We're going to do some really fun uh, body weight uh, strength training. We're going to use some dumbbells uh, or kettlebells or whatever you got around to, to increase the tension and keep those gains, those hard-won gains. Uh, today's story is about Bao Zeshuan, who is a Mongolian herdsman, uh, uh, historically, before he was identified as the world's tallest living man by the Guinness Book of World Records in 2005. So uh, he, he chose not to play basketball. He did serve in the army uh, like so many uh, Chinese and Mongolian uh, 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 males. He served in the People's Army for about three years and uh, retired to be a, a herder and uh, never really got to use his height for uh, a public service until his number was called, not for basketball, but for uh, veterinary services. So Bao Zhishuan was called by an aquarium uh, in Mongolia that uh, had some dolphins, and these dolphins swallowed some plastic shards from a broken instrument, and it was lodged deep inside their bellies, and they needed that. They didn't have the tools, even with the forceps that could articulate to get through the digestive tract of the dolphins. And so Bao was called in to rescue them, and he did. So with his 1 point, uh, you know, 1 1.1 or 1.2 meter long arm, was able to reach in and pull out the plastic shards inside of the dolphins, and not all of them, but most of them, and then the, they were able to digest the rest safely. So the aquarium did not lose their dolphins, and Bao was a hero. Now, you don't have to be uh, ex you know, ex exorbitantly tall to be a hero. You just have to uh, show up with the gifts that you have. And this theme of everyday heroes and everybody having something to give is something we've been harping on harping on a lot lately at Training for Warriors because uh, there's so much going on and, and we're all needed. It's an all hands on deck kind of scenario where we've got a band together and really show up for one another. And you, yes, you, Joe G, yes, you, Bob, yes, you, Cassandra, you are needed to get through this, to get through this uh, quarantine and get through this pandemic. We all got to work together. So. Don't forget, your gifts are valuable. You gotta, you gotta share them with the world. Now today, we are gonna be using our, our bodies as our gyms. If you have a body, you have a gym. And we're, today we're gonna be increasing the tension, the time under tension and the stress of our muscles so that we continue to develop that muscle that we fought so hard for to earn inside of the dojo. Now, we're gonna do that through uh, some strategies and tactics that were taught uh, uh, to me by Pavel in his book, The Naked Warrior. He talks about how to use these single arm push up and the single leg squat to really develop some strength if you got nothing else available. And we're gonna do some other fun stuff too on top of that. Without further, further ado, let's get this party started. We're gonna do a lot of stuff with the push up today. So we're gonna use a chest stretch that I really enjoy. I'm gonna be here on the ground, just reaching out. Gripping, twisting across my back, planting my foot to the ground, taking a breath. Whew. Breathing, relaxing. Breathing, relaxing my face, letting that chest loosen up, letting my bicep loosen up. I'm, almost, I'm touching the ground on the backside with my foot, with my heel. One more breath. And then I'm gonna switch sides. Again, loosening up. We're loosening up so that we have more access to better range of motion while we're training. We have more access to more muscle fibers. Whew, well tight, this is kind of burning. Burning my bicep, burning my forearm, burning my chest. If you're one of those very highly mobile people, uh, I'm, first of all, I'm impressed. Second of all, then you can go and get that foot flat on the backside. You can get this more of a, an oblique stretch and open up that thoracic spine a little bit more, opening up that chest, those deeper muscles. I'm relaxing my face, then open up as much as I can. The, your body takes your cues from your brain, so relax your face, relax your emotions, 
and you will surrender more to the movement. Aha! Very good. Ugh. We're gonna do a lot of hip stuff, a lot of squats, lunges today. So we're going to go even deeper in the squat than we normally do. We're gonna drop down. I'm squatting, butt down, chest up. I'm inhaling, reaching up, overhead, exhaling, coming back down, inhaling, going to the other side. Exhale, come back down, tucking my chin to my chest. As I exhale, locking out the hamstring, or the knees rather, stretching the hamstring. I'm gonna do it again. And every time we do this, we're not in a hurry. Every time we do this, it allows us to squat deeper. It allows us to get more from the exercise. Chin to chest, exhale. Ah, that's two. Coming back. Tucking the chin to chest. Dropping down. Tucking the chin to chest. That's three. Exhale. We're gonna do one more. Keep that chest up. Exhale, chin to chest. All right, up next, we're gonna do a yoga windmill. So in this yoga windmill, we're going to get into a big deep lunge. I'm going to put my hands in line with the lead heel here. I'm going to let my lead leg drive forward, back leg stretch back, inside hand is gonna reach out and up to the sky. I'm gonna reach and rotate that hand back until my arm becomes parallel to the floor bend the elbow, come through, then I'm gonna switch sides. Oh. Same thing on the other side. Reaching forward, back leg back, all the way up, rotating that arm like a rotisserie chicken, coming right back down. Boom, we're gonna do that again on the other side. Blocking out the back leg and the lead leg Drive, knee, lead knee driving forward, inside arm. Coming through, rotating, back. Using all the muscles in the shoulder, all the muscles in that groin, thigh, hamstring complex. Not in a hurry, taking our time. Let's do one more. Through, around, drop it back down, through, up, around, oh. ha ha, okay. And last but definitely not least for our training today, we're gonna to be using our ankles a lot in our squats. So we're gonna mobilize the ankle and we're gonna do it in a, in a uh, three point stretch. So I'm gonna let my knee bob over my shoelaces, over my toes, while I keep that heel flat on the ground, pushing it in through my shoe. And then I'm gonna add in a three point stretch as that knee comes forward letting it open up that hip, reaching that hand back. So I'm stretching everything. Again, pulling my knee forward as much as I can. Then I'm gonna switch sides and do the same thing. We're going for five per side. Forward. really letting that knee drift forward as far as we can, because remember the goal is to improve that ankle mobility. We're also stretching that hip 
and that shoulder at the same time. Oh, yeah, that feels good. Oh, man. Oof, got a lot of work to do. Okay. So, we stretched out, we mobilized. Now it's time to, uh, to do some, some practice for our strength training sets. So, we're gonna do push-ups and we're going to do single leg squats. So what I mean by that is, um, we're going to be doing pistol squats. So if you have a couch available, what you're gonna do is, depending on your skill level, if, you're, uh, if you need a higher spot, you obviously can get a chair or something that's kind of tall like a bar stool. But what I want you to do is, I want you to lock out your, your inactive leg. So I'm gonna do a squat on this left side. I'm gonna create tension through my fists and through my abs by pushing out, not sucking in, but pushing out with my belly. And I'm gonna drop down, touch that chair, come back up. That's one rep for the pistol squat. Now, if that's a little challenging for you, what you can do is you can sit down with both feet and then kick out the leg and then stand up one foot at a time. So you can come down with both feet and then you're gonna come up with just the one foot. So practice that. Give me five reps on the left side, five reps on the right side as you get your feel, as you, as you get that together, that, uh, that difficulty set up. So, I'm going to get a box that I know is a moderately challenging box for me, and that'll be where I, I go to do mine. Do a few warm-up reps here. So again, we're going five per side to get at least a few reps in to practice. Touch. Again, I don't want to fall. You don't want to fall to the ground. Ah. Nice. And then... Make sure your opposite leg. So start on the weaker leg. If you struggle with your left leg, start with that leg because you don't want to be able to do it with your strong side and then not able to do it with your off side. And then so for your push-up today, we're going to do an explosive push-up or a one-arm push-up. So I'm going to give you the option. So an explosive push-up is very dynamic, it's very powerful. It's gonna come, come really quick off of, the, off of the couch or off the ground. So here I am, I'm gonna go, bam, explode up, come back down, boom, explode up. So you can do a jumping push-up where you're jumping up off the ground. People might do these as clapping push-ups. I don't necessarily like clapping push-ups. I'm kind of clumsy, but just jumping off the ground is a great way to do this. Because of the, uh, the pistol squat is so demanding, we're just, we're forcing the uh, recruitment of more muscle fibers. The explosive push-up, we are re recruiting all the muscle fibers we have access to as fast as we can. Now, if you want an even more challenging variation than that, you could try a one-arm push-up. And I rec recommend, unless you've been practicing this, trying it from a, a surface like a couch or a box first, but what it is is it's how much tension can you create throughout your entire body. So I'm going to get my one hand and I'm going to uh, grip the floor. My off hand, I'm gonna reach behind me, squeeze, make a diamond out of that, squeeze the glutes, everything's tight, and I'm gonna press, her, press out with my, my belly on the way down. Takes a lot of energy, a lot of effort. I'm gonna, then you'll, you'll match it with the other side. So I started with my weak hand, my left hand, and so I could definitely match it with the other side. Everything's tight. Whew. All right. So just doing one of those is very, very challenging. Uh, you could do two, three, up to five. I wouldn't do any more than that. So that will, your form will degrade over time. So the most important part about a single arm push-up is ratcheting down that lat, getting tight through the shoulder, and really uniting the shoulder with the, the rest of the torso. So if, you, if it hurts your shoulder, if it hurts your neck, if it doesn't feel good, 
do traditional push-ups. So we're going to go back and forth. We're going to do five sets of the pistol, five sets of the push-up. So the push-up, if you're doing that explosive push-up, I I'll do up to six reps. If you're doing the one-arm push-up, whatever you can get done is amazing. Awesome, just stick with that. But we're going to do five sets of each. I'm going to rest about 45 seconds in between. So I'm going to narrate it at my pace. You can go faster, you can go slower. But, well, I, I would rest at least 45 seconds whenever you're done, just because that's going to help you be strong. And you want to continue to have that strength and apply that power as you continue to train. So I'm going to keep moving, get my first set of pistol squats done, squeezing my fist, belly, touch, one. And two, three, four, and five. Other side, squeezing that, squeezing the fists, making that tension in the belly. One, two, three. Four, five, nice, all right. Going through my push-up phase. So I'm gonna go home and stick with one rep per side because it's really hard for me. Kicking out my legs. Really focusing on that lat recruitment. That was easier. I guess the warm up helped. So maybe next time I'll try two ah ah repetitions. Hmm. Getting my water, getting that rest. I see you, Francie. Make sure you're resting. All right. See you, Bob. You got to rest. Make sure that you're not rushing through this. I've been resting for about 15, 20 seconds. I'm gonna go back into it here in another 20 seconds. But it's not about how fast you get through, it's about how well can you do it. It's about how much, how can you apply the technique that you've learned, right? Those are the important things. It's not what you do, it's how you do it. It doesn't matter if you're doing assisted push-ups, it doesn't matter if you're doing a one-legged squat or a barbell deadlift. It's all about the technique. All right, we're going back into it. Second round. Squeezing the fists. Touch. One. Touch. Two. Touch. Three. Touch. Four. Touch. Five. All right, again. Locking out the, squeezing those fists, belly's tight. One, two, three, four, five. Woo hoo! All right, so good. So good. Push-ups, can't forget that. All right, I'm gonna go for two now. That was probably a little too much. Let's see if we can match it on the other side. <laughs> That's not the level of intensity I want you to have. That was probably a maximum effort from me. So I'm going to back it off, go back to one rep per side. But I like the intensity. That's good. We just want to make sure the form is good. So we got to give ourselves a little bit of room. I'm going to rest for a full minute before starting my third set. 
Wow. Don't be in a hurry with training. You're not trying to get through it. We're trying to get from it. From this practice, from this practice, I want to be strong. I want to be made stronger. I want to be crushed, beat down, or exhausted. All right. That's about 50 seconds. I'm going to go into my third set of squats. Make it a fist, touch, one. Touch, two. Touch, three. Touch, four. Touch, five. Oh, okay, I gotta control my descent. I don't wanna flop onto that box. One, two, three, four, five. One push up. I'm really getting into it. Third set. Just gonna do one perfect push up. Rock on. Wow. All right. Yeah, that was much better than doing two. Clock's ticking. So. Going through to the fourth set. Accumulating that tension. If you're doing a speed push-up, your, your explosive push-up, last rep should be pretty powerful. If it's not, then go ahead and maybe shave a rep off or make it easier. If it feels like it's too easy, get closer to the ground. Use a chair or stool or ottoman, something that's a little bit lower to the ground so that you have a little bit more of your own weight on your arms. That way you're continually making those micro progressions to get to the floor, to get to the next level, to get to build some muscle, burn some fat, feel good, and bring forth the warrior within. Four set, going through it. Touch, one, touch, two, touch, three, touch, Four, touch, five. Back to the top. Make it look good. Boom. One, two, three. Trying to breathe. Trying not to fall. Four, fell on that one. Go slow, Josh. Touch. Yeah. All right. One rep, either side. All right, a lot of yelling today. Really feeling good about this one. <laughs> All right, as I recover, hopefully you're remembering to drink water, making all those reps look good, making it feel good. If, you're, if you've got a good single arm push up, take a picture of it, take a video of it, send it to me. I'll use it as an example, I'll critique your form but importantly, we gotta know that we're all challenging ourselves, that we're all doing the, the best that we can at this time, growing as much as we can. So, to that end, check in, make sure that your last set is your best set. Last set! Doing our squats. Starting with my off leg. All right, squeezing the hands, belly's out. Touch, one, touch, two, touch, three, touch, four, five. Okay, getting hard, it's okay though. Touch, five. 
two, three, four, five. All right, to the floor. All right, left hand. Squeezing the hand, squeezing the glutes, belly out. Ah! Woo! Running out of time there. Oh, wow. That was tough. That was a tough one to finish on. All right. As you wrap that, we're getting into our B circuits, C circuit, and D. So we're going into reverse lunge and the uh, high pull. So if you have a dumbbell or if you have a kettlebell, doesn't matter which, doesn't matter how heavy it is, you wanna try and carry it as high as you can for these exercises. So if you have one kettlebell or one dumbbell, you can, create, you can grab it here for a goblet. If you want to try a more challenging position, you can have the elbows high, the uh, dumbbell on the collarbone. If you've got two dumbbells, you can do a nice elevated position where you're setting those dumbbells on the head of the deltoid. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to do a reverse lunge. So I'm going to step back and I'm going to do all the reps on one side first. So we're gonna go left first, one, two. Now I'm shooting for 10 of these. You could do more if you have a lighter weight, you could do less if you have a heavier weight, but I'm gonna go for 10, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Switching legs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Ha. Okay, that's taxing. When you're in that rack position, you're lifting up that thoracic spine. You're really working that upper back. You're training your core. It's got to stabilize from somewhere, right? You're going to flow from that into not an upright row, but a high pull. So the high pull, I'm going to be here. I'm going to hinge back like I'm doing an RDL, pop up onto my toes, ride that momentum up, stop the dumbbell right at chest height. Four, I'm gonna do 10, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. That movement comes from the glutes, hamstrings, and transitions, and explodes that weight directly up the body to end in that upright row position, but supported with your legs. So if you've got a kettlebell, you just do the same thing, holding the handle, one dumbbell, just grip your dumbbell. However you're doing it to make it work, no worries. If you don't have any tools, what you'll do is you'll pretend you have a, a weight, you'll do an RDL, you come up, touch your chest, squeezing your shoulder blades together, come back down. So you're just gonna do basically an RDL and a high pull. That was one round. We're gonna do three sets of 10 each, reverse lunges and the high pull. So I'm gonna go back into the reverse lunge now. Tackle that. Again, about a minute to rest in between. We wanna make sure we're strong. Getting in that modified rack position here. Left leg first. One, two, three, four, 
five. All the weight is in that lead leg, six. Knees traveling forward of the lead leg, nine. One more, 10. Oops, stand up. Other side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ha ha. High pull, ten reps. One. Two, three, four, five, elbows lead, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Whew. Yes. All right. Every rep counts. Heart rate is climbing. That's good. Enjoying that. Enjoying that effect of the training. So, let me get my water. Coming up on round three. So, hopefully you're feeling strong. If you have lightweights at home, you can add some reps. Do a little AMRAP or a burnout here. As many reps as you can with good form. Then move on to your second exercise and do that. This is pretty taxing for me. I've got some challenging weights here. Coach Josh is feeling the burn. So I'm going to stick with my weights and attack that last set. In the rack position, coming up. Left leg first, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, <laughs> ten. One, two, three, Four, five, not in a hurry, six, making every rep count, seven, not trying to get through it, but trying to get from it. That's nine, boom, high pull, butt back, leave the elbows, kick those hips forward on the toes, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ha ha, yes. <laughs> Joke's on you, weights. I survived. All right. So, here we are. Coming up on our C circuit. So, we're going to do squats and RDLs. We're really busting the legs today because legs have so much to do with testosterone. Obviously building up the muscles of the leg, conditioning. So getting that volume really when we can, stressing out those, those big muscles. So for this, the squat position, we want to be as vertical as we can. So. We're gonna do sets of 10. And I'm gonna do a modified rack here. So I'm gonna, forearms are gonna be pretty, pretty well vertical to the ground. I'm gonna drop the hips down, driving the hips forward. Two, three, I'm gonna do 10 reps. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, Romanian deadlifts. So unlike the high pull, weight's gonna stay down. I'm gonna reach back with my hips, squeeze the glutes, power forward, that's one. 
two. That logo stays pointed up at the ceiling. Three, four, five. Pushing through the palm of my foot. Six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. I get really low to the ground because I have very long arms. So I can almost touch the ground with those weights. If you're mobile, maybe you can. If you have short arms, maybe you can't, it's okay. I know there's some T-Rex in the house. Respect Viviana. But it's just about the movement, right? So getting those hips to drive back as far as you can, loading them. Okay, we're gonna rest 45 seconds to a minute. Jump right back in the squat and the Romanian deadlift. So I'm using moderate weight. So I'm, I've got tens on there to doing sets of 10. If you have a really light weight, you can go further. If you have heavy weights, you've got, you know, 50, 60 pounds in your hands, then, you know, uh, I would say, first of all, good job, Juliana. Second of all, uh, you could drop the reps as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back into the squat rack here, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Rock it forward. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Whew. Feeling that in the hamstrings and the glutes. Really burning up the abs and butt. That's the idea. Resting again. 45 seconds and getting back after it. All right. Remember when you're feeling exhausted or tired. You always got a little bit more left in the tank. That's the principle of overskud. Overskud for my Danish friends. And it's no matter what happens, you always have that extra ounce to give to your kids, to give to your family, to give the person that you need, to give to yourself to get that sleep, to get that broccoli in, to get that water in before you're done for the day, before you're surrendering. Just one more thing, one tiny thing you can do for yourself. Last set. Back to it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, really pushing through my feet, really emphasizing that clench at the top. Four, five, don't get lazy, Josh, get strong. Seven, eight, bend the knees. Nine, recruit all the muscles. Ten, ha. So much fun. Now we're really, now we're really cooking. It's time to get those shoulders and those arms involved. This is gonna be a fun one, this is gonna be a burner. So, we're gonna go curl to press, and when we do, I'm gonna show you a, uh, another way to do it. So, if you have a pad, or a pillow, or you have a mat, where you can get on the ground, grab that, so you can get into a kneeling position, a full kneeling. And what we're gonna do is sets a 10 on the overhead and the curl to press, but we're gonna do them from this position. We're gonna get some core training in as well. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flatten my back, squeeze my glutes, is driving the hip underneath the shoulders. Now I'm in this nice pillar here, pushing apart with my glutes or my knees, and then separating that 
mat with my knees, that's gonna engage my butt and my abs. So I'm creating tension now through my whole body. Then I'm gonna grab my weight. So I'm here, I'm squeezing the glutes, everything's on. I'm not mailing it in. I'm gonna curl, and I'm gonna press overhead. Come back down. That's one. Two, don't let go of the glutes. This is just good training. Three. Four, it's easy as you get along. I think it's all about the arms and lose track of the center. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Woo. Ten. Yes. All right. Now, you're like, wow, okay, I was feeling that. Now you're going to do the same thing with your triceps. So I'm going to grip overhead, stretching that, those hands behind the head, up, one, elbows in place, two, now really focus on the core, three, four, rib cage down, Josh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, now I'm awake. Everything is alive, everything is part of it, okay? So, you've got your uh, dumbbells. If you have heavier dumbbells, you could do two. I almost don't wanna think what's gonna happen when I try and do my, my core engagement and my curl with 50 pounds, but why not, let's see, huh? Second set. If you're ready, I'm ready. Squeezing the glutes, separating the knees, engaging those abs, curl, press, down, one, curl, press, down, two, go in neutral grip when I go overhead, three, keeping those glutes on, Josh, coming up, four, ha, that's four, coming through, five, halfway home, ha, six, Glutes on, Josh. Seven, we don't run, we stay with it. Stay with that tension. Pushing everything apart. Eight. Nine. Yeah! Ha, okay. I was having a hard time maintaining the form right there. That was a little stressful. So I'm gonna try and do it just one dumbbell in the next round. I would, I would coach myself out of that, be more precise. Going into the triceps now. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Glutes on, Josh. Nine. Ha. Ha. Wow. Wow, that's a lot. That was a lot of tension. Just that instability and that using of the knees and the feet really hit me. Gone through almost a liter of water. That's a good sign. Okay. So, one of the things that we were doing while we were going through all that training is every exercise was a core exercise from the pistol squat, the reverse lunge, the high pull, squat RDL. Everything was a core exercise. So, we've done a lot of core training. Don't really need to beat it up too much more. So we're not doing a core finisher because life is the core finisher. All right, coming through. Last set. Best set. Going back to one dumbbell because Josh has humility. He wants to be successful. One. Two. 
<laughs> what was that? I just went right through that whole movement. Curl, press, three, four. Everything is engaged, Josh. Five, six, seven, rib cage down, making it look good. Eight, feeling that in the shoulders and the butt at the same time. How is that possible? Nine, 10, getting it. All right, one dumbbell, one final rep, one final set. Glutes on, one, keeping everything tight, two, three, four, five, six, stop rocking Josh, seven, you can rock, yeah, yeah, what, nine, but you can't rock, ten, ha, holy rusted metal Batman, that was, uh, Muy in fuego, muy caliente. I don't know Spanish or Italian. I don't know what that was. But what I do know is I'm feeling ready for dessert, ready to, to finish strong. Compared to everything we just did, 20 body weight squats, it's nothing. All right, so I'm set up, rocking. One, two, getting that dessert training. Three, four, Five, six, seven, lock out those hips to the top. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Boom, 20 knee grabs. I'm just gonna go on the ground here. Getting it done. Throwing the hand, catching the shin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, zero. Swimmers. The coup de gras of the dessert. Okay, so I'm eyes are 12 inches in front of me, just looking straight ahead. Net, I'm not trying to tuck my chin, also not trying to lift my head. Pulling those elbows into the hip pockets. Swimming, six. Get those hands close to the waist. Nine. Twelve. Still swimming, 14, 15, spreading those fingers, 16, 17, 18, 19, ha ha, 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 holy Toledo. The moral of the story is if you're seven, eight, know that you don't have to play basketball to change people's lives. Sometimes it's simply waiting by the phone to save the life of a dolphin. Your gifts, even if you haven't applied them completely, uh, there's something that the world needs. There's something that we're all gonna need to get through this together. So keep feeding yourself, your mind, your body, and your spirit. Continue to bring forth the warrior within. Notice how Train for Warriors has finales of finales of finales. The encore of the coup de gras of the dessert.